Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. So today I'm gonna to be working on an iPhone 11 Pro that was sent here because it is liquid damaged. This phone is a little bit unique because it shipped out almost a month ago from Brandon, Florida, and it has been all the way to Kentucky and back and has taken literally weeks to get here. So if you look at a map, Brandon, Florida is right here and Sarasota, Florida is right here, which is only about a 50 mile drive, yet this thing has been in transit for literally hundreds and hundreds of miles, and the box just looks like absolute total chaos. This customer has already emailed us to say, I'm really concerned that UPS has lost my package. That was like a couple of weeks ago, and I told him, have faith, hang in there. Sometimes these things can be hung up for ages and then all of a sudden just show up one day. Well, here we are. I have the phone. This is an iPhone 11 that has been in transit for ages. The box got all smashed up, but the phone is okay. Let me read to you what the customer says. Phone was floating in a pool for a few minutes. Screen showed damage right away. Was not reacting when it tried to turn off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check its buoyancy. Nope, doesn't float. Let's have a look at this thing together. I have not did anything to this phone. I haven't connected it to DC power or nothing. This customer is of course interested in data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually open this one up and look at it. Given the symptoms, I really don't wanna screw around with connecting power and fear that I could like burn something up. All right, so here we are looking at this phone. This is just an ordinary iPhone 11 Pro in all of its glory. I'm really happy to see that it has both of the pentalobe screws in it. The back side of this phone is pretty well unremarkable. I'm not seeing any liquid shadow here on the camera lenses. Um, let's look at the ear speaker hole. This right here is the most common place for liquid intrusion on most so-called liquid proof iPhones or liquid resistant. Let's just open this thing up and see what we can see then, shall we? First order of business, remove the pentalobe screws. Now I'm gonna place this phone in my handy dandy opening tool. This is the Refox RS50. This thing opens the heck out of some phones. If you'll notice, I've had it uh, just a little bit warm. So I'm gonna place this phone in the holder like that. And then to sort of help things along, I'm gonna warm this phone up just a smidgen. I've got my hot air set on 220 degrees C with an airflow of 120. And I'm gonna to try to warm this up just as quickly as I can. Also watching to see if I might get some fogging up there in the, in the camera lens. It's pretty common to open these things up and they already be wet. However, not so common after they've been in transit for almost four weeks. All right, here we go. Just gonna start cranking down on the vise here. Oh, that's coming open real easy, fellers. I'm gonna say I'm most likely not the first person to open this phone, you know it? Oh yeah, look at this thing just coming right open. Definitely not the first person to open it. All right, so let's see what we got behind door number one then, shall we? Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. Liquid damage and missing adhesive all over the place. I didn't need to use a tool on this one because it just didn't have any adhesive on it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get the screen assembly out of the way. I could actually just go ahead and power this thing. Uh, let me at least get the screws out of it first. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the, oof, battery. You know, I'm noticing this thing that's missing the foam pads here. It's missing some stuff already. Somebody has, yeah, it's missing the sticky pads here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and keep taking this apart. It's missing stuff all over the place right here. And with these sticky pads missing and things on the, on the, on the board, this right here is starting to scream prior logic board level repair attempts. So let's just go ahead and get the screen out of the way. All right, now before going any farther on this, before I take the board out of it, before I hook power to it, before I do anything else at all, I'm gonna go ahead and have a look, a much closer look at the logic board and see if I can see what all has gotten wet. It is not looking very hopeful for full repair. Oh, and look here, this camera bracket that goes over the camera, these two little tabs right up here, 
those are supposed to be, you know, tongued under first and then that little bracket folded down and then bolted in. So this is actually assembled wrong. Let's have a look at this thing under the microscope, shall we? All right, so having a much closer look at this thing, I'm just going to start by sort of perusing the logic board here and having a look down here by the battery connector, uh, we can see that this thing has actually been significantly wet. And let's just unplug some stuff here so I can look at some of these other connectors. This is like an antenna connector. Uh, you know, I'm starting to think it has the look of a board that's been water damaged, but then also has been cleaned off some. Like maybe it's had some kind of a cleaner used on it. Maybe. Let's keep on going here. We do have some nicks here in NAND. Uh, we got a nick here in the display connector. Yes, I am using a big old hunkin' flathead screwdriver as a pointer. That's going to be fine. These front facing connector things have sort of been smudged out and plugged on sideways. What else is going on here? Let's just get... Oh, for the love of all things holy. Well, there you have it, folks. We have ball squeezage. This is not a board. This is not a phone that came here with the description of having already been through another micro soldering shop. This came here with a description of went floating around in a pool for a few minutes. Maybe, <laughs> I mean, just maybe the ball squeezage here is caused by some other short on the board and not by somebody else's hot air station. Just maybe. All right, do we have evidence of this board having already been separated? Let's just, let's just kick it up on the side here. I'm not seeing... Right here is where this board separates. Other than not really seeing much of a gap there, I don't see any solder. You know, a lot of times when people separate these boards, they'll get solder out here on this outer ground portion. Um, hmm. Boy, did that just turn into a data recovery mission or what? All right, here we go. I've got all the screws out of it. The cables are fold back and uh, let's see if this board's like stuck into the housing. Here the board is coming out of it. Nothing too remarkable there. So for those of you that are not familiar with the proper term of ball squeezage, this is something that happens whenever you have solder encased in this hard epoxy that's between these chips and it gets heated and it has nowhere else to go. So you can you know, heat evenly and yada, yada, yada and heat all this up without causing all this squeezage. But this happens when something gets really hot, really fast in a place where it's most likely not supposed to. So the magic question here is, has this board been separated before? Boy, I don't know. First thing I'm gonna do is get this crummy sticker off the bottom of it. And we'll just go ahead and peel that back out of the way. Maybe, boy, it sure looks like this whole entire board has been heated. I, man, it's a tough call. It really is a tough call on this one because I could get into a situation where I spend a bunch of time taking this apart, putting it back together, only to find out that it was the front flex cable shorted. And uh, let's just hit it with a power supply. I'm gonna hit it with a power supply because somebody else has already tried to power this on. I know they have. All right, so here we got the power supply on the screen. We're gonna be paying attention to the channel on the right hand side. That's my channel two. For my ground probe, I'm just gonna clamp it right down there to the SIM tray like that. And then for the positive lead, I'm going to use a voltmeter probe and just stick it on there and see what we get out of that. All right, so we've got the current limited to 100 milliamps. And now I'm gonna to touch the prong here and see what we get. All right, that's what we should get. It just draws a quick 50 milliamp blip and then stops. All right, so here we are looking at the iPhone 11 board view. I'm pretty sure the power button is tied up in this connector here. Yes, here he is. Power button key con L. All we have to do to trigger a boot prompt is short that pin to ground. So I'm gonna go between pin 20 on that connector and pin 12 while holding the power on the battery connector. So let's give that a shot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and raise our current up a little bit. I'm gonna allow it to have up to one amp. All right, and now we're gonna get between this pin and this one right here to see what happens. We are drawing 60 milliamps. 
A hundred milliamps? Hundred and forty? That steaming pile of liquid damaged garbage is booting. I'm going to get a screen hook to this and see what happens. To make it easier for me to press that power button, I'm going to slip it back in the customer's housing. And then also, I'm not going to use the customer's screen at this moment. I'm going to use a somewhat known good test screen. All right, I've got the test screen hooked up here. I'm going to hook our ground up right here to the screw that I've put in because now I can't really get to the SIM tray to clamp it on. And now I'm going to hook up our positive lead right here, 50 milliamps zero as it should be. Now I'm gonna press the actual button to boot and one, two, three, boot. 70 milliamps, 100 milliamps. We're gonna see an Apple logo any moment. Come on, baby, zero. We're gonna get an Apple logo today? Um, yes, yes, very interesting. Maybe this one will actually need some work. Let me just make sure I'm holding this firm. Okay, now I'm gonna press the button to boot and one, two, three, boot. Hundred milliamps. So that means that the problem that caused this thing to get sent here, we're up to a lock screen and uh, huh, there's actually no password on the, there's no password on it. That happens maybe one out of a hundred phones. So that means that the problem that caused this phone to get mailed in here, either it sat and like spent time drying out or maybe the screen itself is at fault. I'm gonna stop right now and make a backup. Um, let me grab a good dock flex. I'm going to get our known good dock flex hooked up, uh, switch to a good battery, get a backup of this phone, and I will be right back with you in a moment. Hokey dokey. I have got the data off of this phone. I mean, it's actually still on the phone, but I've made a copy of it. And holy smokes, that took like two hours. Like, come on, USB 2. Tens of thousands of files. Whew. So... I know that the, I mean, although the logic board has been liquid damaged and it looks all cruddy, the issue that caused this phone to not power up for this customer most likely wasn't the logic board unless it just finished drying out on the way here for three weeks or whatever. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back to the original dock flex and the original screen assembly and see what we get on a DC power supply. So then, original screen assembly, Dock flex is hooked up, DC power supply is now on, and I'm gonna to touch the battery terminal here in one, two, three, touch it. 50 milliamps zero, that is a completely normal thing. Now I'm gonna press the button to boot in one, two, three, boot. 90 milliamps, 130. Holding steady, I've let off the power button. Zero, maybe I didn't hold it long enough. Let's, oh, it looped. So I'm going to now disconnect the front flex cable and try this again, shall we? All right, 50 milliamps, zero. And now I'm gonna hold the button to boot. One, two, three, boot. 90 milliamps, 130. Let's continue to wait. 140, I've let off the button. Looping, all right. So maybe it's not that front flex cable. Let's disconnect the dock flex. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the dock, flip, the head dock flex off of there. Also, let's remove the antenna. So now we've got that dock flex disconnected. All right, here we go. Press the button to boot in one, two, three, boot. 70 milliamps, 110, it's slightly different. And now we have a boot sequence. 
Except the Apple logo was kind of rolly weird there for a second now, wasn't it? So only the dock flex is disconnected. And now I'm gonna see if I can get this phone to boot. So hook our power supply up right here. And press the button to boot. One, two, three, boot. Any minute. Apple logo. Wonder what that rolly crazy stuff was going on there. All right, so when this phone starts up, I'm gonna see if we have working touch. Oh no. No, only half the display is there. It's all, it's all garbled and crazy. Uh, have a look at this. There's what that display looks like. Isn't that lovely? I'm gonna say there might be, I'm not real sure, but there just might be something wrong with that screen. And gosh, with the look of the board, having had what looks like liquid down in between the interposer layers, this thing has had you know, visible liquid damage down in the dock flex area. This is what I would consider to be a, uh, a bit of a wild goose chase nightmare. To completely repair this phone, it will wind up needing a new dock flex. It's gonna need a new screen assembly. Beyond that, I also noticed that one of the, uh, well, the front facing camera, it's been liquid damaged. Battery has obviously been liquid damaged. This would be a total nightmare for full repair. It's just gonna be one thing after another, after another, after another. If we're lucky, there won't be any damage in between the logic board layers, but uh, I do this for a living and I have five mouths to feed and this is not a phone that I'm gonna pursue for uh, full repair. I would have to buy a screen, likely buy a battery, buy a new dock flex, all money that has to come out of my pocket and if the phone for any reason has issues beyond that, then it winds up being a warranty job or you know a, a refund because the phone died afterwards and you just promised somebody that was it was fixed. So this is gonna wind up being a no fix and um, I'm gonna send the data back to this guy on a flash drive. Sometimes I do work out other deals where I'll put like used parts on it and just splinter it together good enough to get the data to them, but... Uh, Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video, everybody. I really thank you all for watching. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Sorry there's not much to see here, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.